life in Plymouth, Massachusetts. With her everyday struggles and keeping her family happy, safe, and wise, she had a very busy workload. She would probably start her day off by cooking soup and making bread. After that, she might start washing the clothes, then gardening. Finally, I changed it to the children, the husband, and the pets. She liked taking long walks to collect berries, <coughs> stealing fish, and etc. Depending on the weather, her chores might change. The typical attire of the pilgrim woman, when women often wore a long apron, might merely conceal the skirt of her gown. At times, they drew up in a corner and tapped under the belt, creating a drape in the front. When she dressed for the day, she would tie this belt under her apron and over her waist. Belts were almost always worn by both sexes. Since the 17th century, garments seldom had pockets. Both men and women used the belts as a place to tuck gloves, a soft hand purse, or a letter. They might also suspend gathering <coughs> of bag purses, knives, scissors, or other articles from the table, <coughs> suspended by string or, or ribbons. I would like to show you some of the things you might have never been shown before. The pilgrim woman would wear a little tiny leather belt, and she called this her girdle. And on this belt, she carried her possessions, much like the woman carries today in their handbags. This was probably 1627, based on the item she carried. She would carry a knife, and the knife she would use for cutting up animals, fish. She would also use it for pruning herbs, cutting vegetables, or fruit off the plant, vine, or the bush. Scissors. Scissors. They were used for sewing and cutting up the herbs. Large utensils. Probably wooden for cooking or paddling the children. <laughs> <laughs> cooking would be an all day chore. Various bowls were on the table, and many plates and utensils hung from the fireplace, all readily acceptable for the use while cooking meals. Trebles were used to hold cooking pots. The swing arm of the crane made the cooking safer for women, mm. as they were not required to step in front of the fireplace to take the pot off the fire. <clears throat> the open fireplace was a hazard to women, mm -hmm. pilgrim women, as many were badly hurt or died from burns, caused when their long dresses would catch fire as they attempted to reach for the kettles or pots being warmed by the fire. Making bread was especially hazard, as she would put her arm into the oven to see if it was hot or not. Then she would put the bread into the oven. Her arm would typically get burned in the process. The towel, number three, the towel. The towel to dry her hands, washing from mm. cooking or gardening, mm. or washing the face <laughs> of the body. <laughs> <laughs> the tin cup. Probably came in 1620, mm. used for water, medicine, carrying corn in. This was a shared cup, as mm. everyone would drink out of this common cup. And <coughs> if anybody in the family was sick, they all changed the cups. Fifth member, Hatch Hatch. The sick family members were kept inside the house which amounted to just a large room, possibly with a lock. With no fresh air, the germs would spread to the rest of the family. This was how most of the sicknesses started. And that could easily kill one or more family members. A common cold could be deadly. 
They bathed once a month so the oils would stay in their skin. Starting with the father and the mother, the children by age would follow with their bath. Large water cans were brought into the house and put into large wooden tubs of water, probably in front of the fireplace. By the time the babies were washed, the water was very dirty. I think I would have done it the other way around. I'm going to start with the little one first. <laughs> they wash their bedding once a year. This is because they couldn't afford to get new ones, and they didn't want the bedding they had to wear out. You would find on the clothesline most of their bedding that they would be airing out. A broom was used to hit the bedding to shake the dirt <laughs> and the bed bugs. The, bat, the, the pouch number one used for herbs to make medicine. The pilgrim woman kept a garden pouch outside and one inside to hold her plants and to use for dyeing their linens and woolen clothes. Different plants they would typically have in their pouch were pope berries, conch nail, madden, nut hulls, lichen, St. John's wort, simlac, hemlock bark, bayberry leaves, onion skins, sweet thin, and bracken. The colors went from red to brown. The pilgrim women were expected to be the doctors for their family and neighbors. If a professional doctor mm -hmm. was summoned to come to her house for sickness, he would expect her to have the right herbs available. If she didn't have it, he would leave. <laughs> Hence, in her pouch, she always carried her, her medical herbs. Special seasoning for cooking was very important to make food tasty. Other herbs were used as poison for roots repellents from moths and ants. Many herbs were used for disinfectants, mm -hmm. even room air refreshers. Many of the house plants could repel flies mm -hmm. from the meat and aid in childbirth and prepare dead bodies for burial. The Wampanoers mm -hmm. were instrumental in showing the pilgrim woman which herbs were best to use for each purpose. Mm. A worry stone. She also carried the stone called a worry stone. When she was worried, she would rub her thumb back and forth on it. I have tried this and would highly recommend it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do this with your hands, but that, that is a more fun. Number eight, the key. The pilgrim woman had no voice in community affairs or ability to vote. Their husbands did the voting, made all the decisions, and signed any important papers. He carried in the back pocket the deed to his house. The woman carried around their nest the key to her house. And no one went into the pilgrim woman's house unless she, she invited you. And this was your case. Inside, let's see, number nine was rope, used for hanging clothes, carrying water, and probably tying up the children, tying up the children <laughs> so they could not run at all and get hurt. So let's see if I can. Kind of falling apart here. Here, the rope got turned. Number ten, number the second pouch. That's one, two, here's, here's the second pouch. Okay. Um, the pilgrim woman carried a second pouch. It was for her pennies. She would save her pennies throughout the year. This is where the saying, a pocket full of pennies, came from. At right is an example of the first coin minute in Massachusetts Bay Colony, 1652. Mm -hmm. The pine tree coin for use in New England. Though it was 
illegal to mint coinage in the colonies, the Mint Act of 1652 was passed to standardize the coinage being used. The third mm. under the 1652 was for three pence. 11, the buttons. Mm -hmm. Once a year, right after the taxes were paid, the women would buy buttons. Pilgrim women would buy buttons made out of brass, metal, pearl, and two holes. She would sew the buttons on materials in rows and save them. They also used buttons on their clothes. However, if someone had a birthday, a wedding, or a new baby, she would give her buttons row as a present. This was her way of making a fancy stitch with her buttons. She would make flowers, names, and initials. She would cut them in strips according to the event. Of course, she wouldn't put this around her belt, but she put the buttons, and this is where the buttons would go into this. Well, I want to thank you for having me here today, telling you about the Pilgrim woman and the things that she wore around her waist, her pocketbook. I know I would not like to carry all these things <laughs> in my handbag.